I'm Lisa Feldman Barrett. I'm a university distinguished professor of psychology at Northeastern University, and I have research appointments at uh, Massachusetts General Hospital in the departments of radiology and psychiatry, uh, and an appointment at Harvard Medical School. I co-direct a laboratory of 20 full-time scientists and about 70 undergraduate researchers every semester. Uh, and we study, among other things, the nature of emotion, how your brain and your body work together to create the emotional events that you experience in yourself and that you perceive in other people. For many centuries, probably millennia actually, there's been a persistent belief in Western civilization that emotions are baked into your brain, some animalistic ancient part of your brain, and that uh, the, you know one of these uh, emotion circuits that we all share is the assumption and that we maybe even share with other animals will trigger like fear, so you know you'll encounter a snake, it will trigger fear, this will cause a diagnostic facial expression, like a wide-eyed gasping face, um, a change in your body, such as a you know increase in heart rate, uh, and uh, a tendency to engage in a particular action, like to run or to freeze, uh, and so on. A and this idea is not supported by the available scientific evidence, not just in the last decade or two, but really for centuries. So whatever constituted evidence at a particular point in history, there was always evidence that this view uh, wasn't true. It's a deep part of our sort of ideas about ourselves, uh, you know, our ideas about human nature, the idea that we are you know, we have some sort of animalistic part of our brain that has to be controlled by thinking and rationality, but that's just a, a deeply cherished fiction. In fact, emotions are not built into your brain from birth. They are built by your brain as you need them in a way that is very specific to the situation. So, for example, fear is not a thing with a, it's not a single event that has a specific facial expression and a specific change in your body and so on. Fear is a whole group of instances or episodes that vary from one another depending on what's required in the situation. So sometimes in fear, you will make a gasping face. Sometimes in fear, you'll smile. Sometimes in fear, you'll cry. Sometimes in fear, you'll scowl. Sometimes your heart rate will go up. Sometimes it will go down. Sometimes it will stay the same. Sometimes in fear, you will run away, sometimes you will approach, you might attack, you might freeze, you might faint. Um, you, there are many, many things that your body will do in fear, and the physiology of your body, the internal systems of your body, are preparing your body to take an action. So these are, any category of emotion is a set of highly variable events where your brain is attempting to make the event that is going to be the most functional in a particular situation. The way that your brain makes emotions is the way that your brain makes every mental event that you experience in your life. Your brain's basic job is to regulate the systems of your body. Brains didn't evolve so that we could think and see and hear. They evolved to regulate the systems of your body your cardiovascular system, your respiratory system, your immune system, uh, your endocrine system, and so on and so forth, your metabolism, and so on and so forth. And so your brain is always regulating your body from the moment that you're born until the moment that you die. And the sensations that come from those re that regulation, that is the changes in your heart rate, the changes in your breathing, and so on, those sensations are sent to your brain and your brain has to make sense of them in context of the other sensations that it's receiving from the world, the sights and sounds and smells and so on that make up your experience of the world. And so an emotion is occurring when your brain makes sense of the sensations in your body in relation to the world 
in a particular way. So the same ache in your stomach can be a feeling of anxiety. If you are in a doctor's office waiting for uh, a test result, it can be hunger. If you are at the dinner table waiting to eat, uh, that exact same ache in your stomach can also be a gut feeling that someone is untrustworthy or if you're a judge or a juror in a courtroom, it, it might be evidence to you that, uh, that the defendant is untrustworthy and uh, should be found guilty. The, that ache in your stomach is the same in each case. It's just that your brain is making sense of what it means and predicting what you should do next differently depending on the context that you're in.